on winter speed. The United States returns to World Cup bobsledding in Calgary. But there will be challenged by the Canadians who have won this event two consecutive years. Olympic bobsled track in Calgary, Alberta for today's World Cup two-man bobsled competition here on Winter Speed. Hi everybody, I'm John Morgan and today is the first World Cup competition since the Olympic Games of Millehammer in 1994. I'm joined today by Clark Flynn, former member of the Canadian Olympic bobsled team. And Clark, usually after the Winter Olympic Games there's a big layoff of competitors and you find new guys in the field, but here we've got a great field, probably the most competitive field we've ever seen here and the same old faces. Well, it's it's almost a repeat of Lillehammer without the, with the exception of Vader, but you got, of course, Pierre Lewis, he's won this event two years in a row. You got Vise, you got Radio Gertzi, who did well at the games. Of course, strong field from the Americans. I mean, it's a really solid field. When you talk about the Americans, there's always a story about the American bobsled team. Well, Tuffy Latour is USA number two in this competition. He entered it as USA number three, but got bumped up to USA number two over Jim Herbert. This is also Latour's first ever World Cup competition, and he also drew the number one seed, the number number one person down the track. With all this highlight and fanfare, we asked him about the pressure. Um, I feel good. Hopefully, uh, as uh, it went in practice, everything will go well for all going off first. Nervous? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. What are you going to do to uh, try to relax today? Um, have a fast run the first heat and second heat. Well, that's Tuffy Latour, USA number two. USA number one is golden boy of the U.S. bobsled team, Brian Scheimer, the guy who won the World Cup overall title in 1993, only to fall off to a subpar performance in the World Cup at, at the Olympics. We asked Scheimer about his aspirations at this season. As always, just, you know, to get into the, to the medal hunt again like we were in 93, off year last year, unfortunately. Uh, get the, the boat iron sleds going. Uh, Tuffy is, is absolutely flying. He's got his going, so that's uh, Jim and I are both, you know, it, you know excited about that because we know that our sleds can, you know, can get there. And uh, I have a feeling, you know, that this year before the end of the year, our sleds are going to be flying. And uh, like I said, we got the push team. If everybody stays healthy, uh, we're going to be on top once again. Well, Clark, what do you think about Brian Scheimer? Can he return to that form? Well, what made him so successful a few years ago was not only the driving coach and his equipment, but also his fast start. He didn't get on top of that game last year, and let's hope this year he can come out with that big start, because that's so important in the sport nowadays. First heat highlights, USA 2 Tuffy Latour with Jeff Woodard on the brakes. Couldn't take advantage of their early start number. Finished ninth at the end of one heat, suffering with poor start times. But USA number one, Brian Scheimer and Randy Jones, great starts, only two hundreds behind in the first 50 meters, then put him in fifth place with a chance for a bronze medal. The team with the best start times in the first heat was Christoph Longen of Germany, world champion in 1993, superior start times, but all he could do was tie for second with a Canada number two sled driven by Chris Lorre. Miraculous driving down the track because Lorre had very poor start times. He showed his ability all the way down his home track in Calgary. But the team to beat, Canada number one, Pierre Lourdes and Jack Pick. They won this event two consecutive years running and it looked like they were going to run away with it once again. Their game plan, a three-peat. Results, the end of the first heat, Canada one's got the lead. The German number one sled and the Canada number two sled only 1100s back. Lurking not far away from the medal, it's Brian Scheimer of the United States. He's in fifth. Tuffy Latour in his first World Cup ever. He's in ninth. Jim Herbert, USA 3 in 20th. Well, the weather always plays a most important part of the competitions here in Calgary. Uh, light snow falling, air temperature 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Most importantly, the track temperature 28 degrees, and that's probably what you want. But the winds are picking up 15 mile an hour winds, and they're saying that could increase. So that could affect the competition. Clark, what do you think? Well, one of the big problems is that light snow, as that collects from the track, it gets a little slower. And if the track temperature goes down, it's going to start to make the ice tacky. And of course, the sleds will slow down run after run. Up at the top of the track, USA number three, James Herbert. His brakeman's James Purvis. They were in 19th place, 20th place here to the first tee. Pretty disappointing. They had a lot of problems. 
Purvis, great track and field background, five-time All-America, two-time national champion in high hurdles at Georgia Tech, and he's a big man. He certainly is. I mean, that's what Jim needs, though. Jim's a big guy, too, long levers. He's an explosion of power that he's going to get from Purvis. Well, you notice the Bodine sleds, though. Some of the other sleds on the circuit have a rounded cowling. The Bodine sleds, a little more pointed. That breaks the airflow around the pilot as opposed to up over, up over top. A little defense for Herbert. He got bounced from USA 2-3. to three. Sometimes you get a little crash early in the season, you get a little cobwebs, Clark, and it's pretty tough to overcome that. Well, yeah, and your confidence is shaking up a little bit. Boy, straight down the middle of the track, though, Jim Herbert. Traveling 119 points. Not a lot of great speed, 74.3. Can't get any smoother than that, Clark. No, he's a little late into 10 there, but he's driving some nice, clean lines, so you can't be that disappointed with this run. Needs a time of 57.86 to move up at least one spot. 57.78, so he's going to move up two spots. Jim Herbert in the United States. 57.78 good enough for 18th place here in the first World Cup competition of the year. Should have done that in the first team. Much more bobsledding coming up after this. Back to Canada Olympic Park in Calgary, Alberta. It's now time for your little tour down the track. And here we go. You can see the sled in runner grooves. That's only for the first 50 meters where the athletes push and they jump in the sled. Now that the driver's in the sled, it's up here where you cannot make any mistakes. At slow speeds, a mistake hitting the wall left or right will make you lose valuable time at the bottom of the track. Our driver, Canadian veteran, three-time Olympian, Dennis Marino, knows the track like the back of his hand. Up top of the track, the most important thing is keep it right down the middle. Now we go to a three-corner combination seven. Now the big omega, 180 degrees to the right. Now curve eight. This sets you up for this long straightaway. And this is the fastest part of the Canada Olympic Park track. Now into the big Chrysler corner. 270 degrees, change of direction. Four Gs of force, and you exit like a slingshot. And you use the speed in the bottom part of the track to allow the sled to go in and out of the corners without steering. The guy who lets the sled go right out of the corners with no steering is the guy that wins at the bottom. As he goes into the finish corner, another five Gs of force. Good finish time tonight will be anybody that breaks 56 seconds flat. Up at the top of the track, the cool team from Jamaica, Dudley Stokes, Winston Watt, 24th place after the first run. And I think we told you in the first heat, they don't really care too much about two-man. They use it as a warm-up for the four-man, and they really enjoy four-man bobsledding. Clark, what a difference. In six years since the first time we saw him, or seven years ago when we first time we saw him get the sled. It was pretty horrifying that first couple of years of the sled. No, it certainly was. They were having even they were even having trouble on the push track. We saw a couple of days they pushed the sled right off the end. So but they've really got a good crew together. They got some coaching staff, they got equipment, they got a lot of experience now. And then most importantly, he's learned the secret to the sport is not to drive it. The secret to the sport is to drive as little as possible. Driving in the right spot. 534 is a good start, very respectable start. The other thing, too, is the Jamaican athletes have probably figured out how to acclimate themselves to cold weather. I mean, they're great sprinters in the warm weather sport, but uh, they had problems up here shivering at the top of the track for three years. And now they finally uh, conditioned themselves to compete. And uh, boy, last year at the Olympics, they surprised a lot of people by finishing 14th overall. Well, certainly their four man result was uh, amazing.
talk about struggling. Check that out, Clark. Well, that early exit, you know, that pushed him into that counter wall, and then he drifts down, although he had a nice clean straightaway. Big problems at the start. There he is, down in curve 12, over stirring up high, pulls it down, bang. You can't do that, Clark. We thought Dudley had learned his lessons about steering down there. Well, he came off way too early. He should have let that sled come around a bit more and then shot the exit. Instead, he blew across into that counter wall. 155.94 for the cool team from Jamaica. Dudley Stokes, good enough for 24th place. One of the biggest disappointments in the first heat, the Great Britain number one sled, Mark Tout and Lenny Paul in the brakes. 11th place, didn't have a very good start. He made a mistake up in curve one, two. I look for a great time here in this second heat. Well, if he can clean up his top part as well, he's going to get that faster start. Well, 537 the first heat, probably around 534 or 533 here. 538, the only slide we've seen not improve at the start. No, again, a little mistake there. He drifted across the right-hand side. Boy, with Mark being so powerful and strong, we certainly expect him to be much more, much faster at the top. But he made the same mistake up at the top as he did in the first heat. Watch out here, too. He's only got about 10 hunters to play with. He's minus two already. And again, we expect, well, we expect a good time here out of the park now. Well, you know, his two-man results last year weren't good the whole season through. 75 mile an hour speed. It's very similar to the type of speed he had in the first heat. That's oh. another mistake, Clark. Yeah, and he's got to worry about those sleds that are still to come. Well, he's got about 15 hunters to play with, so he should stay at top. Look at that quick up and down there in that curve. Here's that mistake here, Clark, out of the Rizal. Pretty clean, but his back end slips across, and then he just hugs that right-hand wall, which gives him a late entrance into 10. They want to be on that left-hand wall and drift across so they get an early entrance into 10. 154.73 total time. He's our present leader, Mark Tau. Great Britain number one is Brakeman, Lenny Paul. They're both from London. Uh, now up at the top of the track. USA number two, tough field, mature. His breaker, Jeffrey Woodard. They're both from Schenectady, New York. Very disappointing at the start in the first heat. Latour has been doing very, very well all week long. It's his first World Cup race of the year. Maybe the nerves got him. But boy, the start, he, some people remarked to us he didn't run very far down the start track. And I'm sure Jeff Woodard, the experienced breaker in the back, has told him, we got to do it in this heat. Well, it's got to happen right at the top. I mean, they got to get that start down. Almost, they got to be down in the 30s here to be competitive at all. See how he doesn't dive at the push bar. He holds right on to a lot of them start off the blocks and dive for that push bar. And that gives him a big help. Boy, he did the sled early again. Yeah, 536, 400 better, but that's not a very good start. As soon as he got out of those start throughs, he drifted right across that left-hand side. You know, he's got to get in, get a hold of his ropes. Here we see him, a little bit of power. Just as that sled breaks the crest, he's in. Jeff didn't run that far either, but look at that. He's buried. That's it. That mistake right there is going to make, make him drop four or five places. Nothing with Tour. Well, the first time you're in a World Cup bobsled race, Clark, maybe the, the nerves got to him. Well, it's a big competition here. I mean, there's lots of strong competitors. Well, for that bump, though, look at that speed. That's the best speed we've seen in this heat. He's had that bad bump. He's got a great line going. 785, 4200 off the pace right now. He's going to drop at least two places. Oh, he just bumped right there. Time to left. 57, 56. He drops only one place. He's lucky he didn't drop two or three more. Mark Tout from Great Britain goes in front of him. The start clock, he barely runs. Look yeah. at the mark. And we've seen so much earlier than everybody else. We see Jeff taking short steps too and his head going back and forth and hear that costly mistake. Oh, not costly, crucial. Look at the headline in the prize of the... He had a nice line. line all the way around. We'll look for his runner tips, just a little bit of touch. Nice, smooth line out. A little bit of drift to the right-hand side, but otherwise a nice, clean line. Well... He needs the experience of the World Cup circuit. He got it tonight. Total time, 154.80. He's dropped one place.
place. He's in second overall. Switzerland number one, Rado Gochi, Donald Ackley. Here are the standings of the two-man Olympic bobsled competition from last year's Lillehammer Winter Olympics in Norway. There's Vader with the gold, Gochi. In a close race, he led three of the four heats. Vader caught him on the last heat to win the gold, but Gochi in his first Olympic performance, silver medal, that's not bad. Rado collected himself a medal, too. We saw in that first heat how great Donald just the place that sped up the air. Not a bad start, 33. Yeah, 37 in the first heat, but this is a pretty uncharacteristic for him to be in this position. We thought better things out of this great Swiss pilot. Mistake. At least he was further down the course. You know, and he had speed Look behind at him. That. Whoa. Yeah. Two runners by Rado Gochi. Ride of his life on the Calgary track right there for this Swiss pilot. Nonetheless, he takes the lead. Time 154.20. Donald Acklin says, hey, nice ride. Happy to be at the bottom, but they're also in the lead. Much more Bob's Gunter Huber, Italy 2, the bronze medalist from the Willie Hammer Olympics. One of the guys that turned in a magical trip down the track, Clark. We talked about it. Doesn't get a great start. But boy, does he make that time decrease as he gets down to the bottom with the high speeds. Well, last year, he was giving up 1,500 for Pierre Lewis, and he still collected a silver medal. So he really does have a nice feel, nice touch with his hands. Tartaglia and the breakaway, they went from 538 to first heat. What they do different here, Clark? He just had good explosive power with his legs and a nice run through with the brakeman. You know, he's got that good leg turnover. Now watch this guy pick up time. He's minus three there. Next box will be about minus. Oh, Colby minus two. Has to get to the Swiss leg. Must have been a mistake up there, Clark. Next box will tell us for the speed. Minus six. He picked it back up. 75 to seven. Nobody's even near that speed. This is what we expect out of him. speed. If they got the speed, they'll get the time. Well, he's gone from six to nine, and he's perfect on the bottom and the speed part of the court. No helmet shaking here in the finish. Hooper to the finish in the first place easily. 56, 94. Wow, what a great time. Fastest time of the heat by far. Cries will just perfect Look, nice clean line, a little movement with the head. He just waits for that little exit point and then gives a little tweak with the lower runners. Nice clean exit, a little drift to the right hand side, but that's okay. Gunter Hoover, wow. Total time 153.97. Italy number one's the current leader. USA number one, Brian Scheimer. Best physical shape he's ever been in. We asked him about it. I'm in better shape this year than I was last year in the Olympics. It's sad to say, but uh, when you're around it, you know, as a job, you know, for the for the whole summer, you, you tend to get better. Disappointing 13th place finish at the Olympic Games. Okay. They're trying to rebound with a good okay. World Cup finish oh, here in the first series in Calgary. Well, we talked about the key to him having a successful season. It was at the start. He had just a 5.4. It was a great start in the first team. 5.24 in the first team. Everybody else is getting faster. Let's see what the U.S. does. 5.22. That ties the best start of the evening. one of the stronger pilots. Great leg turnover, good entry. He was always a good crewman, too. Randy Jones, that was the Duke University football team. Now, him and Hoover are pretty tight with each other. So that minus seven, he was minus nine at the start. That was minus seven. This is crucial right here. Now he's already lost it back. He's got no speed. He's going to lose his place. 
See, look at the powerful leg turnover they had. Nice clean entry by Brian. And he gets a nice, also a nice clean entry, gets his health in and tucked down. Where they lost the time, we don't know. But when he's been up at six and seven, here he is at eight. Look at the leg tips. Nice low line. You see the let, sled hop a little bit, but look how tucked down he is. We well, had a great line down out of eight, exit out of eight, and nice line into Kreisel. Must have been up at six seven because he went from minus seven, Clark, to plus one in about 200 yards. Well, he's definitely going to be disappointed. He really, uh, I'm sure with that great start in the first and second, he thought he was going to place higher. Now up at the top of the track. Fourth place from Czech Republic, number one. Jerry DeMuro is breakthrough. Alemski, surprisingly fourth place. But good start. Good finish. 522. We did expect some earth to improve on it. Well, Demura and Scheimer are pretty close. He's only got 100 feet on Scheimer. Now it's 1,600. Well, that continues to happen. He's going to drop two or three places. That Hoover is going to be a top two leader, but there it is, 16 to 14. So the next block, that's going to be down to about eight or nine. Right here, unless he makes a mistake. There's 12. Just peeking over the top of the cowling, looking for that exit point. Look at the rotor tip. Look at that little skid right there. That's where he, I think he lost a little bit of a fraction of the time of that exit. Clark, look at the climb there in third, or in 11. Well, he really climbed to the top there. He's got to keep that sled down. And then, of course, he just touched coming into 13.